Hello. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to do uh, photography, uh, which is called camera arts on Moodle. And um, uh, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, say that um, uh, I had originally planned to do this lesson last week. So I wanted to give you more time for your midterm. And I want to make sure you get that done on time. So we're doing this tonight, uh, Tuesday, and then on Thursday night, I will do art as entertainment uh, because I don't want us to get behind. Um, uh, so that being said, uh, oh, the other thing is um, some of you start turning in your midterms and I will get to them. I have been a little bit delayed in my life because I have a, a plumbing problem that seems to be taking up a lot of my attention, but um uh, I will I will start getting those graded right away because I I'm sure you want to know um, you know it affects your grade so I'll try to get going on those and get them all done as soon as I can. Um, <clears throat> so camera arts photography is divided into three sections and the first section is about artists who use photography to capture what is there. Right here we can see a snowflake that is something that is there we maybe didn't know they were this intricate um, without it being magnified, but it is what's there. The um, next group of artists are artists that photographs what's there, but they add their own particular uh, interpretation or slant to it. Their, their vision comes through in uh, how they uh, photograph the works. And then the last one group is artists that uh, use photography to create new realities. Um, a narrative meaning like tells a story or a different story. So um, we'll uh, go through these and there are some videos for you to watch. There is a video about this man. His name was Wilson Snowflake Bentley. He was born Wilson Bentley, but um, he was the first person to photograph snowflakes and um, people didn't really realize uh, how unique and different each snowflake was until he did this. Now, he was born in 1865 and died in 1931. So the technology wasn't like what we had today. He had to go out in the snow, out in the cold. He lived in Vermont. So luckily <laughs> he had plenty of um, snowflakes to, to uh, photograph. He would uh, use like a black surface, I think like black velvet and a feather, and he would catch a snowflake and then put it on to the black velvet. And then he had uh, created his own magnifying lens on a camera and would take uh, these photographs. Um, and one, I don't know about now, but a, a few years back I read and they said that um, there really wasn't, even with all the technology, a much better way to photograph him than uh, what he did. So he became known for this, and that's why he be, uh, was called uh, William Snowflake Bentley, and there was a children's book written about him. There's a video, I have a little video about him. He, his family, he was from a farm family, and they were not that happy about his um, photography because uh, they just wanted everybody to work on the farm and thought he was kind of wasting his time. Um, but he persevered. He, uh, right up until the end when he was out uh, in the snow and he um, got pneumonia and died at the end. So uh, take a look at the video and here's some of the snowflakes. Let's see if we can. Why is this? Huh. That's not what I want. Why is this not? Okay, I'll do it that way. Okay. There. So you can see they're really drastically different. I think I backed up there. All right, okay, I'm gonna back up for one minute. The next uh, what man we're gonna look at is Edward Mybridge. And uh, he was a very interesting person. Uh, he also was, uh, well, they're all photographers. He was a photographer and um, uh, he, um, there were two uh, seemingly wealthy men in California who 
uh, placed a bet with each other. One of the uh, men said that when a horse runs, um, that it always has one hoof on the ground. And the other man said that when a horse runs, uh, at some point, the hoof leaves the ground. And um, I think they wagered quite a bit of money on this bet. And so they hired um, Edward Mybridge to uh, document a horse running. So his way of doing this, because also this was in the 1800s and um, didn't have the kind of you know uh, photographic equipment that we have today. So what he did was he uh, had a series of cameras lined up and each one had like a wire across a trip wire so that the, when the horse would hit the wire, it would take a photograph. So he had a series of all these photographs, you know, kind of almost like when you have a flip book when you're a kid of images and then when you flip them, it becomes um, animated. Well, uh, he, he did this to um, solve the bet. And uh, it also, he ended up doing a whole series of uh, documenting things in movement, which we'll see. But uh, he was inadvertently the person that invented film. So, um, you know, the, uh, you know, when he played all these uh, images together, it made like the first film. So uh, he also was, uh, so we like him because he made films, but uh, some other things were questionable. One thing was, um, this was so long ago that he uh, was in a horse and carriage accident and got thrown out of the carriage and had brain damage. And um, I don't know if that's why, but he believed that his wife was having an affair with someone. So he uh, went to that person's house uh, and when he opened the door, he shot him and killed him. And uh, I think like <laughs> those same people who, you know, maybe like <laughs> had him settle the bet for them, he seemed to be well connected because uh, the court went to trial and they said it, that he, he was justified that, that he killed him. So um, when obviously that's not the case. So uh, he had his dark side definitely, but, um, but inventing uh, movies is a, is a good thing. So here is, the those first um, um I just went away for a minute because somebody told me that I think this is in the opening of the movie nope I'm pretty sure I haven't seen the movie I want to um but uh I just kind of flash back to that uh yeah here you see the horse and this is with all the photographs that he put together so here's where they were um each one of those was where the horse hit the wire and uh, took a photograph so you could uh, see. Now you do see that uh, all four hooves are in the air at some point. So whoever had that bet won. And here's some athletes, a bird in flight, the different stages. Um, so that he, so um, my bridge was also capturing what is, uh, just like the snake, snowflakes were there, but we didn't know they were that intricate. And the horse was run, uh, galloping, but we didn't know his <laughs> feet all up. So uh, they helped us figure it out. Um, this is capturing what's there also. This man is named Jamal Shabazz, and he was a fashion photographer uh, it, for his uh, profession. But then uh, for fun, he uh, went and uh, in his neighborhood and where he grew up, he wanted to document um, uh, the people uh, of, of his neighborhood because, uh, you know, he felt like things were changing and he wanted to keep this moment. So he, these are people that he knew from his neighborhood. So a long time ago, uh, people had boom boxes and <laughs> they would usually be very loud. I think that's why they're called boom boxes. And uh, you can see it's a while ago because uh, this car was a new car. <laughs> All right, so now we're to the next group of artists that have a particular slant. And, um, 
Diane Arbus is uh, a well-known photographer. She did a book of photographs that for a long time, and it, I'm not sure it still could be, it was the best-selling book of photographs. And uh, she had a particular view um, of seeing, seeing people that were like outsiders and uh, kind of noticing the people that maybe didn't fit in like to society. Um, she, uh, uh, she came from a wealthy family. They owned a large store in New York and she got married and she had a daughter and she became famous, but uh, for whatever reason, um, she ended up committing suicide at, at one point. So I don't know what, what was the, I don't know the, the reason why, but um, I do know in her photographs that uh, she kind of seeks out I wouldn't say a darker side, but uh, a more unusual side. So I know tattoos are very popular now, but this was, um, I think like in the 60s, 70s. Um, and they weren't that popular. This man probably worked for like a carnival. And here is a man who has, I think it's called gigantism, but this he is with his parents and this is how tall he is. So his own, um, being so physically large and being born that way is what made him, you know, be not fit, not fit into the, what we would normally consider um, people's size. She was also fascinated with twins and triplets. And, um, you know, like really, these are just two little girls, but still there's just something a little weird about it. And um, the, uh, I mean, what makes it weird is the, is the way that Diane photographed them. And um, uh, there was a movie called The Shining. I don't know, it's a pretty popular movie. So maybe some of you have seen it or heard of it. And when they, when the person made that movie, um, they put, there's twin two twins in there that are like, uh, that kind of creep everybody out. And this was his inspiration, this photograph for doing that. Here's another triplets. This one, once again, I, you know, here's this boy was somebody uh, playing in Central Park in New York. And, um, you know, it, it, he's just an average kid, but be, being Diane had this particular way of looking, she caught him at a moment when he, you know, didn't seem like he fit in. Uh, I read a little bit about this photograph and as it turned out, his parents had just told him that they were getting divorced. So he actually was, you know, having a, some kind of reaction. Um, but then here he is, he has a toy grenade <laughs> and, you know, like his hands are kind of clutched and, you know, even like, I think the fact that his little overhaul strap is kind of falling off and the look on his face, you know, you, you kind of catch him at a, a moment of, um, it's like a moment of angst. And uh, two ladies also that, I think a lot of society would say uh, doesn't fit in. I hate to say that. <laughs> everybody shouldn't everybody fit in, but uh, anyway, that was Di uh, her photography. So um, that was her particular slant. This is a woman. This next is her name is Amele. There's a video for you to watch about her and her particular slant. When I say slant, I mean the way that she envisions uh, the world and takes her photographs that kind of matches that. She was born in Vietnam during the war. And um, in the video, you'll hear her talk about that, uh, like sometimes they would go to school and the school would be closed because there'd been a bombing near there. And when you're born, they were born into war, they, she didn't really know anything different. She said they would just go home and not think much of it, but her parents would be really upset um, <laughs> that they couldn't go to school because of bombings. And um, she, and she ended up becoming a photographer and she lives in the United States now and she teaches at a college, teaches photography, but, and she does uh, these photographs. And the thing that I think is um, different about it is, is she says in the video, you'll hear that she's not really pro-war or anti-war, that she sees an almost like logistics, like landscapes, like, um, you know, what it takes to put the, like all the logistics of a war really, um, for example, here she is. These she talks about this too. She photographs some um, like the like I think they call them reenactors, where they pretend like they're at war. So 
being she couldn't really actually go to a war and photograph, she uh, photographed people pretending like they were in war. Uh, but here's an example, like if, you know, uh, you're sending military across the world, like just the thought of getting all of these, you know, big pieces of equipment into these places uh, is a huge effort. Here you can see the large military craft and then there's a um, ship out in, in the water. So it's a landscape, but it, and it doesn't say it's pro-war or anti-war. It's more about like how she grew up with war that this is what's so. Uh, so take a listen to her video. Um, this is Wolfgang Tillmans and he takes photographs of everyday life, but he, part of what he does, like his individual way of uh, interpreting them is that then he takes photographs and groups them so that they actually create a different kind of narrative or finds commonality. So, you know, all these photographs are grouped in this way purposely. So the photographs become part of this larger installation. Here's uh, the everyday life photograph, also a tree reflected in the cup of coffee. This one is one that he did, but this is um, before digital camera, people develop film in dark rooms and dark rooms had chemicals in it. And he was playing around with the chemicals in the dark room. So these would be non-representational. Dogs, boys, windshield wiper, people in a tree. Um, here's another one of the manipulated photographs from the dark room. Here's two photographs that he put together, uh, like uh, like the, you can see there's a relationship between the two photographs. The next artist uh, is um, James Van Der Zee. And this is our last category. And this is where the photographer uses photography to create something that maybe wasn't there. He's not capturing what there, he's creating something else. Now this particular picture is uh, capturing um, these two ladies from um, Harlem, New York. There was a time called, I'm gonna sneeze. Uh, excuse me. It was called the Harlem Renaissance in New York. And it was um, a time, uh, there's a black community that had uh, writers and musicians and uh, just a uh, like a renaissance me in a time of rebirth. It was just a lot of creativity and art going on. And you can also see uh, like how beautiful, you know, I think most of us would think these are like lovely clothes and decor. <clears throat> but what James Van Der Zee did was uh, he used the the photographs to tell a story. I don't exactly, I haven't researched the story on this, but I think we could even make some guesses. Like here's this married couple and then here's this ghost-like image of a little girl. You know, I think, uh, you know, it could be maybe the bride thinking about when she's gonna get married or um, maybe it's a future child <clears throat> that, uh, you know, they're going to have, or maybe it was somebody that they lost that they wish was at the wedding. Um, but you can see that there is another meaning, another level of meaning or story there. This one, uh, I think is a little more obvious where he, the ghost image is, uh, she looks like she's more in mourning. And uh, there's the person from the other side comforting her. Here is a soldier lost in thought. And this one um, is a funeral, but you can see up in the corner that the young woman is the person that um, they're at the funeral. So while they're at the funeral um, mourning her, she uh, is looking down and seems happy with, with seeing uh, everyone uh, who came to, to see her. <clears throat> Here is uh, 
This, this is actually one of my favorite ones, I think. Um, this man's name is Lee Wei, and there is a short video, uh, watch that, it shows how he makes these things. Now, he does use some Photoshop, but most of it is pretty physical, actually, surprisingly enough. This is a series that he did um, about people who just landed on Earth randomly. So here's this guy who just landed on Earth and is in the windshield of a car. Now, when you see in the video how he makes these, um, you'll see that... Uh, um, like there'll be, there's, there, there's some machinery that helps hold people in place and then it's photoshopped out, but a lot of it is them actually doing the physicalness. Here, this, uh, if you saw this, there's like uh, big cranes that have kind of almost like bungee cords that hold them up. Um, and then, uh, so it looks like everybody's floating. And this had a big crane that had this boat. So here's like a, a monk and looks like what might be some model or socialite on the back. And the guy that's uh, getting thrown off, he is the photographer that is, uh, there's this woman flipping him around and throwing him <laughs> across the road. So take a look at the video um, and you'll see it'll, it shows you how how he did those. So he's actually using photography to make up a whole different reality. One of the things they said in the video is um, he's Chinese and that um, there was a point where a lot of people that lived in the villages and country moved to the cities and the cities became so crowded um, and uh, like there, people were living in small apartments because uh, there wasn't room to have larger apartments. And so there's, pic he has some pictures where like they're just reaching out the window, like, like, because everything's too crowded. Um, so that's like one of the stories that, that uh, goes with his pieces. Uh, this is Cindy Sherman and her whole thing is about making up um, making up people really. She uses herself and then uh, photographs. She uses wigs and makeup. And um, this was a series she did. They were stills, but she wanted them all to look like they were from a movie. And this does look like it's from a movie, I think. And this is all her. And then sometimes some of them are pretty wild too. This is her. <laughs> They're all her, so both of these. So uh, there's video. Um, it's the, That video is a little bit long, but I watch most, like at least watch some of it, if not all of it, uh, because it, it sh she'll show, you'll see some of her different personas and you'll see uh, how she, she shows how she, uh, she has a whole studio of noses and wigs and clothes. And um, uh, she uh, has been doing this for quite a while. Uh, this artist is named Dulce Pinzen. Um, she lives between New York and uh, Mexico. And this particular series of images is about uh, every when superheroes, like when they're not being superheroes, they have everyday jobs. So. Uh, here's Spider-Man cleaning windows, the Flash running a relay race or running a race, a marathon. I'm not sure who this one is, but um, I know I always say the Hulk, but he's not the Hulk because I guess the Hulk's green. So, um, but some guy doing construction, <laughs> some superhero. Aquaman cleaning fish. This one is, I did not know who this was. It's an ant who's very strong and he's doing construction work, but uh, it's a Mexican superhero. And in one of my face-to-face -face classes, I showed this slide and there was one girl who grew up in Mexico and she screamed out the name, um, I forget it now, but uh, he's well known in Mexico. Catwoman taking care of kids. The Flash cooking in a restaurant. I wonder woman doing laundry. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, that, so Dulce Pinson uses the camera to, uh, she's telling a story kind of elaborating on the superheroes everyday lives. Uh, this is 
our last artist we're looking at. And if this looks familiar, it should, because when we did the tabula process, we used um, his one, I think called Beer Dreams, where uh, the light was coming down. Um, so you'll see, uh, for those of you who did the research, <laughs> you learn that um, he uses a lot of the techniques that they use in cinematography. Uh, sometimes there'll be all kinds of equipment and lighting it's because he wants to get uh, the exact kind of lighting that is very important in, to his photographs. Um, he, uh, from what you probably read, he uh, grew up watching like Twilight Zone and Outer Limits and Alfred Hitchcock and, um, you know, these kind of eerie otherworldly experiences, but then he likes to combine this out of the normal with something that is just really normal, like uh, maybe a sub suburban neighborhood where nothing out of the uh, norm ever happens. So um, one of the words we looked at was juxtaposition, where you're putting two things together um, that contrast each other. So we have uh, and one of the ways that he creates these uh, kind of creepy feelings is through light. You know, um, he almost, I think in every photograph we'll look, he has like a window in the background lit up. So it's almost like there's some observer, observer or something, just somebody in the background kind of witnessing <laughs> things. So uh, here, this is another weird one. Who knows? It looks very uncomfortable and looks like... Uh, not not like a happy scene. The groceries are laying on the ground and everyone's so freaked out they don't even care. And the one girl's in the car. Uh, everybody looks like this is not a good situation. This one also, you don't really see anything that's that unusual, but still you just get the feeling um, that something is just not right. And there's that lighting again. So there's usually like backlighting. The lighting comes from the back of the, the photograph. Here's from the other the other place. This one also, you can see here's the window all the way back there and then the lighting's off from the back and then here in the front it's dark. So this looks like maybe Thanksgiving dinner and two people are not there. You don't know why, but they're not eating and they also do not look very happy. Here's the one that we uh, looked at in class. And this one I think is the last one. This one, definitely not a good scene here. Also, you can see the light coming in from outside and um, uh, looks like she got electrocuted. So I think that's the last one. Oh, no, one more creepy one. So look there, there's the light in the other house, backlighting again. Sky, you know, I whoops, oh, let's go back. I mean, when you think about it, you know, it looks like maybe he's a house guest because it looks like he's sleeping on the couch or something. And I don't know if that's a suitcase, maybe. Um, so really, I mean, somebody watching TV and, you know, sleeping on the couch and doing dishes, none of that is inherently weird, but this picture makes it all seem real creepy. You know, just looks like the light shining on him from off the TV, but it looks kind of ghastly and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, all right, I think that's the last one. Yep, okay, so uh, you do have a, a photography assignment. Let's see here, I don't wanna go out, there we go. So uh, you have PowerPoint, the names, here's the Snowflake Bentley video. Um, here's one about Amile, the lady uh, that grew up in Vietnam, Li Wei, that does people smashing into cars. <laughs> and then here's about Cindy Sherman. And then you have this assignment. Uh, where? Oh, maybe it's not, is it not open? The 12th, today's the 12th. Here it is. So you're going to select one of the photographers that we just looked at. This one said cameras for fiction and narratives, but actually you can use any of them that we just looked at just now. Um, stage and create a photograph inspired by the concerns or techniques of their artwork. Post your picture and respond to the following questions. Which artist did you choose and how do you connect your photograph to their body of work? 
How did you stage light and frame your photograph to have it look like you wanted? Tell the story that you intend the photograph to illustrate. Uh, should be 200 words long. And if you want to and know how to, you can use photo manipulation. Um, like this, here's another one by uh, uh, Lee Wei. Um, here's a woman like sitting in like a little love seat floating over France, <laughs> city in France. Um, so you could also create um, one, one girl uh, had a photograph of herself jumping for joy on top of her mailbox. And um, this was uh, uh, during COVID shutdown. And so um, one of the things that what she was kind of at home all the time and shopping online and getting things in the mail was like a big, like a big excitement. Um, and so she uh, wanted to show herself kind of like dancing with joy on top of the mailbox because um, that's where she would get stuff that she ordered. Um, so that's a, that's a little narrative there. So uh, that is your assignment. So I know some of you in the introduction said that you're into photography. So at least I think for the, those people, you will maybe hopefully have fun with this assignment. So um, I will do art as entertainment on Thursday and we will start using our textbooks. So you will, uh, there's a chapter called Art as Entertainment. So um, uh, we'll be reading the chapters along with the different topics. Anyway, uh, talk to you Thursday.